Hello everybody, it's Anir, Engineer, MBA, and Investor. In today's video, I want to talk about the latest quarterly updates from Caribou Biosciences stock ticker symbol CRBU. I've talked about this company in the past. I keep talking about Caribou Biosciences when it comes to biotech genomics. CRISPR genome editing company. I always talk about this company. Now, before we do that, guys, before we cover this topic, this quarterly updates that just was announced last Thursday on the 2nd September, please do like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It really does help the channel. Plus, you get to see me a lot more often. And if you hit that notification bell, you will be guaranteed to see me a lot more often. So, before we even talk about, you know, the quarterly updates, maybe, you know, I made a video like I think it was like two or three days ago about uh, Drake's latest album and I just keep listening to it. I think uh, I know a lot of you guys listen to Drake. Uh, let me know if you have any favorite songs or whatnot, like in this la latest uh, album called Certified Lover Boy. I, for me, it's Fountains. This 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 uh, this song has just been amazing. You know, it's I keep it on repeat. I'm listening to it at the gym when I'm running outside. Even when I'm, when I'm at home, this is just amazing. So anyway, I just wanted to start off with that unrelated, completely unrelated with Caribou Biosciences. Now, as we move into the topic for today's video, I did want to sort of uh, talk about the price action of this company. The past few days, you saw they, er, uh, they posted earnings really the 2nd September. Ever since then, it's been up about 8%. If you scaled it back for a month, it's been up well over Let's take a look since 9th August, we're already September, right? Uh, it's 20% almost. And if you go through the moment it IPO, let's just say a few days after IPO, when it sort of uh, dipped to below $15, it has almost doubled, right? Almost 100% up. And this is really fast, right? This is amazing. I've had viewers that made a couple, couple thousand dollars on this stock and I congratulate them. I personally do not day trade. I personally don't, I don't, you know, behave like that for my investments, for my invest, when it comes to investment philosophy. Uh, like I said, I always research, I research, I research, then I build conviction, I build conviction, and then I pull the trigger and I keep those stocks for years and years. That's exactly what I'm going to do with Caribou Biosciences. I have no intention of selling although it has basically doubled since I got into it. Because like I said, I got into it in the around just a day after the IPO. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so lots of positive price action. It is due for a pullback, guys. This this is not you know normal. This is not how markets behave. Everything that goes up fast comes back down just as fast, if not, if not faster. So just keep that in mind. I, I know a lot of people are seeing this and, you know, are already imagined that it'll go on, uh, up another 100% in the following month. It could, it could, but, you know, the, most likely the, you'll see some significant pullback. Just keep that in mind as we cover this uh, company as we go forward, not just in this video, but in any future video. So the company posted their quarterly updates, Q3 for 2021. And again, this is basically their first quarterly updates because they just went IPO late July. So a couple, couple of gems, couple of hidden gems there. want to talk about it. Uh, and let me know if you guys found anything interesting, anything you want me to expand on or anything you're not sure about when it comes to this company or just genome editing company in the discussion below, right? Leave me a comment. So their mission statement, right? Our mission is to develop innovative, transformative therapies for patients with devastating, devastating diseases through novel genome editing, right? So quite straightforward. I, 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 I wish they, they sort of expanded that to agriculture and livestock, animals and plants, vegetation, because, you know, they do hold patents on those uh, therapeutics, not just human therapeutics. Uh, we'll go over that just shortly, but just keep that in mind. Uh, so a really nice presentation here, you know, proprietary Chardonnay's RDNA genome technology that enables significant potential, right? So I'm just going to maybe zoom out my face a little bit just so you guys can see a little bit more. Okay, so the cutting edge CRISPR platform, right? Obviously founded by the Nobel Prize winner, legendary Jennifer Doudna. 
proprietary Chardonnay's technology. That's what this company is based on. That's what their bread and butter is at this point. I would argue their bread and butter is more the fact they own so many patents, including licensing deals to the number one company market cap in the genome editing space, which is NTLA, NTLA Therapeutics. But besides that, you know, they, they, they really hold, they're, they're really bullish on this technology that they believe reduces off targets and increases efficiency compared to the first generation of CRISPR technology that, for example, CRISPR therapeutics hold. They're involved with the CAR-T, CAR and I know for this here, um, one of our uh, viewers, uh, specifically Dr. Haruni, he talks a lot about how this is their bread and butter. You know, it's not really CB010 or it's not really, you know, the fact they hold so many patents, it's more the fact they're focusing on CAR-T. This is a field that a lot of investors are looking really closely into. Uh, obviously, CAR-T is serious. This is, a you know, when we talk about CAR-T, you guys are, can already imagine cancers, tumors. Uh, and there are many, many communities around the world willing to pay a lot, a lot for any product, any sort of substance that can actually address those uh, those uh, tumors, those uh, serious tumors, significant tumors that really reduces lifespan by, you know, you know, significantly. So this is really interesting that they're uh, covering this space as well. And that's what uh, um, they're trying to tackle as well, right? So, uh, so Kaibu owns over 45 U.S. patents, including seven U.S. patents, including Chardonnay's RDNA technology. So this is quite exclusive to them. We'll just see, see shortly why this number doesn't do justice uh, in the next slide, but just know that this is what they have in the U.S. Obviously, U.S. is the biggest market, you know, just like in most industries, really. Um, so they have a strategic partnership with Avi, a huge big pharma company that is worth a, a double digits, I think even triple digits market cap billions at this point. Uh, so huge big pharma company, quite interesting. So they closed, the, they when they went IPO, they raised significant cash. We'll talk about this just shortly, but just know that you know they're 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 sort of really have a nice portfolio here. They have some patents around the world, not just in U.S. Have licensing deals, and they have some great partnerships, including the one with Abvi, and have a great backing of leadership, not just Jennifer Downa, but specifically with Rachel Harwitz, the CEO and founder of this company that we've covered in the past in previous videos. Uh, I'll link that with last video on Kaibu in this video just for the sake of it, but. Uh, so I, I really like this slide, guys. I really, really like this slide. Let's zoom in a little bit just so that we all get the same um, visibility here. So I really like this slide because because on the base layer, there's all the patents, right, that they own. Look at this, guys. 48 U.S. patents, 218 foreign patents, 85 U.S. and foreign patent applications pending. And these patent expirations are well over in the 30s, right, in over 10 years. So they have many, many patents. There are serious, serious patent issues in this space. Just know that, right? This is a fact. We've actually made one of our earlier videos in our channel. We talked about the patents that CRISPR Therapeutics hold compared to Antilia, compared to Aditas, even Beam Therapeutics. This is really serious in this space. This I'm not. No one really knows how it's gonna pan out. You know, they they are going in court with some of the allegations. This is ongoing. This is something ongoing. So it's it, it doesn't do justice to sort of make a conclusion at this point since things are still ongoing. But just know that this is serious. The fact that they even mentioned in their corporate presentations speaks volume, and the fact that it's on the base layer of that what we're seeing here shows that this is what everything is based on, right? Obviously, if you hold patent for a certain technology, uh, no company can can do can copy it, right? Unless you want to break the law, and by that, you know you can't really be a public company at this point, right? Because you'll be sued. So, just know that, right? Just to, just know that what I'm saying is quite important when it comes to patents. So, Chardonnay's genome editing, obviously, it is a step over the first generation of CRISPR-Cas9. Uh, it is enhanced, it is off-target reduction, increased efficiency, and ultimately cost, right? So this is very important. They, they are betting on this technology. They dosed their first patient just a month ago for CBO10. We have some preclinical data and research paper. I think it was on mice, if I'm, I remember. 
but or on monkeys i don't remember what it was between the two but which uh, species was between the two that we got that was quite significant and quite promising but uh we'll have to see how the first patient those uh, respond to cbo10 right so the pipeline obviously they have more than just cbo10 right this is this is what they're working on right now but obviously they have cbo12 cbo20 uh, like i said they're addressing car t uh, for CBO10, they're addressing it with PD-1 uh, knockout, which uh, actually uh, Dr. Dean made a great, great video on on this this process, right? I, I'm, I'm not even going to try to explain it because it doesn't do justice when someone like a Dr. Dean on YouTube made an amazing, amazing video on it. So highly recommend you guys to watch that video if you haven't. So ex vivo, in vivo, obviously this is something they're looking into, right? Not just ex vivo, but also in vivo, right? What is the difference? Ex vivo is taking your cell out, making edits, putting it back in. In vivo is making the edit directly in your liver, for example, just like what we saw NTLA 2001 do in, month, in the month of June with their data that sort of transformed the world in genome editing, a huge catalyst for all companies involved. So quite a collaboration with AbbV. So I'm, I love what I'm seeing here. This is quite interesting. They're, they're going to sp specifically talk about something more relevant to their company in the next slide. But just know that this is quite a nice slide. I think everybody that's invested in this company or anybody that's looking to invest in the company should be looking at this slide and should be really focusing on not just the base portfolio, but also all the way up to their future applications, right? So keep that in mind. So here, we believe that persistence is the key to unlocking the full potential allogenetic cell therapies, right? So what is the difference, right? What is the difference here? The difference is between, you know, autologous therapy and allogenetic therapies. And the difference is that in the, in the latter, which is what they're working on, it's off the shelf, right? What does off the shelf mean is that you don't need to wait four to six weeks has what autologous a therapy does right you you need to wait time there is time and like i said these are solid tumors solid diseases that can kill you within four to six weeks they're serious diseases right there's people around the world dying every four six weeks time the moment they were you know diagnosed and that's because the therapy evolve um, available right now are not sufficient they're not able to address it and really the challenge for crispr companies is even if you have this type of cure with crispr can, can you really make patients wait four to six weeks? What's the point of making them wait four to six weeks if they're not going to be alive by them, right? So this is a serious topic. Having the technology is not enough. You have to have the process. You have to, you have, to have a systematic process that delivers the cure to the patient at the right time with the right tools, with the right efficiencies. And that's what Kaibu Biosciences are focusing on And this uh, uh, shelf, uh, sorry, this uh this slide where it is a broad patient access, immediate availability, suitable for most patients, repeat dosing possible, off the shelf, bridging therapy not required, more un uniform T cells from healthy donors. So you basically get T cells from healthy donors and basically infuse that to your, uh, to your patients. And that's the whole point of what they're focusing on, right? And, you know, Rachel Harwitz made a great point on that in her interview with, uh, I think it was uh, Bloomberg, uh, who interviewed her that we covered in this channel. So, plus it's high production call, like manufacturing complexities. That's that's so huge, you know, it's so huge. But I think there's use case for different different, uh, different applications. Um, I, I'm not going to throw out autologous therapy completely. I think there are use cases for different applications. But in this case, what Kaibu Biosciences are focusing on, just know that this is what they're focusing on, the off-the-shelf mentality, right? And, you know, it's all about rapid injection, um, but lower efficiency is solid tumors and liquid, liquid tumors, and persistence is the solution, right? So I'd love to understand what do they mean by persistence, right? I, I, I feel like persistence, in this case, they're trying to make a reference, if I, if I, can, if I may, it's like, you know, it's like in uh, a program code, right? If it doesn't, if it fails, for it keeps persisting. Do, do they mean at that point with their therapy? I'm not sure. Curious to see what you guys think, right? So their approach, right, is to decrease the persistence of anti-tumor activity. Okay, so this is where they, okay, interesting. This is where they expand on the persistence bars. 
Uh, I, I hate when they use like these specific words and they assume that we all know it. But uh, and anyways, you have to go through the whole size, right? Uh, so BD1 knockout, right? This is pretty much what they their their CBO10 is all about. And then you can clearly see over time, you have the CAR T anti tumor activity sort of decreases, and this is exactly what you want. Uh, so this is quite interesting. Uh, pipeline, right? Is uh, initial data is expected to come to 2022. We don't really know what point. I think it's going to be in the first half, or first half, considering it was dosed uh, last month. So you're looking at six to eight months. I think that's pretty, pretty standard, right? So six to eight months. That's put that that puts us to like March or April Q1, Q2, maybe uh, of 2022. We'll get data, and I strongly believe if you get some positive data on that. I think the stock is going to go off the roof, right? It is worth not even $2 billion market cap today. I still think it's it's due for pullback as we speak, but once this data is released, to me, it's all going up, right? I love how they call it platform this. They're, they're taking this uh, playbook from uh, Moderna and Ginkgo Bioworks. You, you see a lot of companies calling them some platform, even Beam Therapeutics. Uh, it is what it is, so pretty cool. So over there, they're talking about, you know, why they're so bullish about the Chardonnay's uh, CRISPR uh, technology that they're betting on, that they have patents on and obviously exclusive rights on. And this is what's attracting a lot of investors. You know, a lot of people like myself are quite bullish on these newer generation CRISPR technologies, right? We all want, you know, first gen Cas9 to succeed. And I'm sure these, these types of companies all want. CRISPR Therapeutics and TLA, Aditas will all succeed, right? Because if you can get one of these companies to have the their programs FDA approved, for example, CTX001, that we believe should be approved by next year, and this is a big win for every company, right? Because the second gen, third gen of Cas9, for example, from Prime Medicine, third gen, to me, all of that will just be accelerated through the FDA approval process, right? So they're doing like the hard work. They're doing the heavy work, right? And these companies like Kaiwu Bioscience are betting big on it. And again, it is very significant for us to see data. It is very significant for us to see phase one data for CBO10, for example. That's exactly why I said that 2022 phase one, uh, first half, we'll see some revolutionary data if we are bullish, if we may be bullish about this company, this is what we should be expecting. Right, so quite interesting. It, uh, it is delivery extends to persistence. That's quite interesting. This is some pretty nice graphs, man. Yeah, so this is what they talk about their data that they have. Again, this is not from phase one for CBO 10. Uh, this is from preclinical data that was happened before they after they filed for IND for CBO 10. But things are looking pretty good for Shadanis RDNA. They claim that it can improve. It can improve that technology significantly. Look at these off targets, almost non existence, literally non existence compared to the all RNA guide uh, for PDCD1, right? So, this is on human, human primary C cell editing data. So, it's quite, quite interesting that you're getting these results. Look at the off targets, literally none, right? So, if you can prove that for phase one, CBO10, to me, this is just gonna, like I said, this company will be multiple value i strongly believe this not financial advice you guys do your own research but this is the whole game is based on right this is this is what investors are looking at right we're not just looking at pretty names or pretty programs or just fda approved we want to see efficiency we want to see reduction of off targets because if you're going to go ahead and mention that in your s1 filing before they went in public and in your corporate presentation that it's all about chardonnay's rdna then you better bet to provide some sort of result right and me as an investor i want to see that result here replicated in their data i just hope that they'll be able to deliver because that's a a very <laughs> I, I don't know like maybe i'm uh, thinking this uh, I'm thinking this way too too much about it, but if you this is gonna be a hard standard to beat, right? And this is what investors I think are expecting. We'll see what happens, right? So over here they talk about the multiplex editing. Uh, so they're also involved obviously with multiplexing and it's quite interesting. Uh, I definitely will not go over that because now we're getting way into the deeps. I just wanted to cover the company as a whole here, CBO 10, and let's see if there's anything we should talk about here yeah it's pretty technical which to me is very important but for the purpose of this video probably not probably not so this is what their plan is right for phase one clinical trial those level one two three 
And, you know, obviously safety is the primary, you know, objective. And then obviously the secondary objective is efficiency. And this is what we talk about. The off targets, if they're able to deliver on both, to me, this is a win-win. And I think uh, this, a lot of uh, investors are looking at this company very, very closely. Um, I just wish they gave us like a quarter, right, uh, for phase data. I'm sure they know, like. What do you guys think? You know, I th I think they know the when to expect data. Like, what is this? It's like a year. You know, <laughs> you should be able to tell like which which quarter or at least which half, right? If you're not gonna give us anything specific, and we'll see what happens. Anyways, uh, moving on to that, I just wanted to also uh, state their uh, cash balance because I always talk about this in our channel. It's very important to me. It's, uh, to me, I think the space is is very very risky. As an investor, you should be aware that bankruptcies and such are not necessarily non-existing and obviously we've all seen what happened in the past with Terranos obviously completely unrelated to genome editing and CRISPR and genomics it does injustice to even talk about Terranos here but we have to do that right we have to mention that that you know you want to avoid corruption you want to avoid companies that are lying and that are basically lying investors to investors and to me, Caribou Biosciences are obviously not doing anything like that. They've raised well over 400, almost $450 million cash right now in the bank. And that's a lot of cash, right? This is a company that just went public a little bit over a month and a half ago. And this company has, I think, $450 million cash. And I don't know if we can find this just from this slide here, but what is their R&D expense? Look at this, guys. Their R&D expense is... 12 okay so it was 12 million for the second quarter right 12, 12 uh yeah so 12 million right so look at this 12 million what does that mean right 12 million if you do times four you know just you know whatever you put it 15 for for the sake of it like let's just 15 times four Right, so this is a little bit about with inflation and with increased headcount, with not you have about 60, 60 million they're burning per year. Right, look at this. Right, if you for whatever, let's just say they don't raise a single dollar in the public markets, which I believe they will be raising cash now. They've already doubled their stock just a little bit over under a month ago. Uh, to me, they're for sure they're going to be uh, raising cash the public fund and sort of secure the bank here and have the green line. But if you look at this, guys, 7.5 year. Obviously, I didn't count for inflation and for increased uh, programs, so on. But they can go about six to seven years without raising a single dollar, without hitting bankruptcy, which is absolutely crazy and mind-boggling. To me, this is a position you want to hold. I think when you see this asking company, uh, it would be unfair for you to ignore this company in the genomic space, in the CRISPR space, specifically in the genome editing space. I think they have something to tell. I think they have a story to tell. I think CBO 10 will be quite interesting as they file for CBO 12, CBO 20, and even CBO 11, right? I think uh, to me, this is this is a company you want to keep your eyes on. I think we, what we did in this channel is we covered this company when they filed for IPO before they even went public. I kept repeating this is going to be an opportunity of a lifetime and the fact that many, many investors that watch this channel have benefited from that advice, um, I think I think it speaks volume. I, I really am proud of that and I think we all work really hard so we should do our due diligence and do our research but ultimately it's your decision, your opportunities, your lifetime, your investments, it's your life so you guys do what you need to do. And we will do what we need to do. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you guys appreciate this. So amazing quarter for Kaibu Biosciences. And let's see what happens with this company in the upcoming months. Thank you for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Smash that like button. Destroy it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And we will see each other in the next video. Thanks for watching.